So tell me a little bit about yourself. So my name is Tommy Rockwood. I'm actually from Louisiana. I'm from home of Louisiana. I graduated with my undergraduate degree in physics from Southern University in 94. I again, I again graduated with my master's in applied physics in 1998. At that point, I went to Los Alamos National Laboratory. So it's a high-end research laboratory that's geared towards that's geared towards safety of the nation, stuff like that. There's tremendous amounts of research efforts that take place at that institution. I joined a um, research team that is involved with alternative energy, in particular um, fuel cells. So what fuel cells are is electrochemical devices that convert chemical energy into electrical energy. So the research that I'm heavily involved with is research that's geared towards um, transportation, so mobile application. Mm -hmm. Although it has other potential such as stationary applications, I'm mainly focused on the transportation aspect. So the testing incorporates looking at um, polymer electrolyte fuel cells um, capable of extending barriers that are out there. And some of the barriers that we have as a nation is that our current resources are limited. Um, fossil fuel research, gasoline, how can we provide some new type of research that will pose a breakthrough that will allow us to extend the current resources. And to date, one of the viable options is a fuel cell. And so um, to date, that's what I've been doing. So what was your time like at Southern University? It was actually an experience, um, a very rewarding experience, um, hindsight. Um, I learned quite a bit. Um, the instructors were heavily involved with my, not only my classwork, but what I could actually do with the materials that I learned in class. Um, my approach to life was to be more hands-on, which is why I took the applied approach. And as you know, when you're in class, it's heavily theory-based unless you're in a lab. So during the class sessions, I always pose the question, you know, where can I use this materials? They were instrumental in telling me how I can use it, and that has strengthened my employment tremendously. Uh, did you have a good network of students that, uh, that you work with while you were in school here? Yes, I, th I think in, in having that collaboration with your colleagues, it, it, strengthens, it strengthens your core capabilities in seeing how different people think about problems and their approach, their solution, how they pose their solution. Typically, when one is hired, it's based on efficient efficiency. Um, we both can actually come up with the right answer, but who was the most efficient and most effective in delivering how that answer came about? So that's important, and you get to learn all of that during these collaborations, during these interactions with your colleagues. Well, how, now that you're working at Los Alamos, how did your, uh, your background here at Southern prepare you f to work there? So at, at Southern University, everything, the road wasn't so smooth all of the times. So research is not smooth all of the times. You come across these obstacles, and the way you approach going across these obstacles is important. It's important for your career path, your, your career growth. Um, there were obstacles at Southern that um, weren't so smooth, but it taught me how not to give up, how to keep that fight alive, how to have this flame that, that stays lit. Southern University has been um, core, aside from my parents, in how I go and approach a problem and not leave that problem until that problem is solved. Okay. Um, do you ever uh, confer with students who are at Southern now to talk to them about how do they prepare themselves to get to a point where you are? Yes. So, as an alumni, I think it's all of our responsibilities to provide that guidance to students. And I do provide that guidance in the form of them being able to ask the correct question to get the appropriate answer. So, you know, we can get answers, but if we don't ask the right question, then what does that answer mean to us? Um, those obstacles that I had to hurdle um, are obstacles that they may encounter too. 
but they don't have to encounter that. They don't have to hurdle that obstacle the same way I did. So I do teach them how to interact with others, how to network, not only amongst themselves, but how to network with instructors, how to network with the workforce of Southern alumni who are out there in the world. Um, now that you come back here for a, a couple of days, is this something you sort of dreamed of when you when you uh, graduated, I'm gonna come back and, and work with my, my university? That goes without saying. Um, I'm indebted to the university and I hold that dear beyond my retirement that whatever I can do for the university, I will do for the university. This collaboration has huge potential. Um, the nation is putting research dollars into alternative energy, other methods, novel techniques, and extending current resources. Um, having that infrastructure built here at Southern University because the professors here have the capabilities. Now we need to implement the infrastructure for being able to perform experimental um, results as well as marrying those experimental results with their modeling capabilities that currently exist. Once we get those two um, to marry, then the students, the students themselves will benefit in terms of strengthening their employment. Um, they will be more employable going into the field knowing what is the state of the art research that's being done as opposed to having redevelop or reinvent the wheel. So this is one of the rationales why I must come back. Would you recommend Southern University to someone else? Of course, including my daughter. Um, Southern University, as I mentioned, does have challenges, but um, students who come from here are students that you see at the head of the board, at the head of the research um, centers, um, presidents, um, top-notch professors. I am the international representative for the United States for the hydrogen fuel economy and developing an international standard for fuel quality. That goes to say, Gasoline currently for cars have three grades. When we come up with a fuel specification, a fuel quality specification for hydrogen fuel cells, we don't want multiple grades of hydrogen. We want the best grade that's available, that's relevant, that doesn't uh, act as a cost driver. So we need to make sure that the fuel and the constituents that are in that fuel are not harmful to how the behavior or the performance of the fuel cell is. So my research involves with taking these certain contaminants and actually implementing these contaminants into an operating fuel cell, and then we look to see how it performs. If it performs not up to par, then what type of strategies can we implement to get this system to perform up to par? So these things are absolutely critical, and critical in terms of we can see how the nation is leaning towards that particular type of research. So my background was all developed here. And now I've taken that black background and hopefully I've taken it to the next level where I'm now looked at as one of the experts in the field.